everyone, it's Elise and welcome back to My Cupcake Addiction. I've been reading my comments and there have been so many requests for something Zootopia themed. So today I'm going to bring you a Zootopia cake and later in the week I'm also going to show you how to make some really fun Zootopia cookies. Not one, but two Zootopia themed treats. The things that you're going to need to make your Zootopia cake, I'm using a little figurine of Judy the Rabbit. This is a plastic figurine and I just picked it up from a local toy store. I've got some white chocolate and I've got some whipping cream. The colours that I'm using today are electric colours, so I'm using electric orange and electric blue. My ganache is going to be orange and my buttercream frosting is blue. This is a single batch of my perfectly pipeable buttercream frosting. I'll leave a link to that recipe down below. And I've also got some of my sugar cookie dough. Again, I'll leave that recipe down below. This is actually only a half batch, so if you wanted to make the cake with the dough and then the cookies out of the dough as well, make sure you check out that cookies video because you can get the whole lot done with just that one batch of dough. I've got two different types of sprinkles, some large colourful sprinkles and then I've got some smaller ones and I've just made a mix of orange, blue and green, kind of teeming in the Zootopia colours. Some pink candy melts, some dark candy melts or dark chocolate, a couple of popsicle sticks. I've got a smaller circle cutter and then a large bowl. I'll leave the measurements of those down below. We're going to be making a big donut. I've got two chocolate cakes, seven inches by about one inch, and I'll leave a link to my chocolate cake recipe down below. And then for my tools, I've just got a rolling pin, baking tray, scissors, Ziploc bag, a knife, and an offset spatula. A little bit of flour to roll out a cookie dough. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is make a sugar cookie. So we're gonna make a big donut. The premise of this cake is there's a scene in the movie where Judy is in, I think, Tiny Town, and she stops this gigantic donut that rolls off the top of a donut shop from squishing the little mole girl, the daughter of the mole gangster father. So I am going to make the donut and Judy is going to be saving the donut from crushing the cake. So my sugar cookie dough has been chilled as it always should be. A generous amount of flour down and because it's quite cool, don't worry too much if it sort of cracks around the edges, just press it back together. It's better to roll it out a little too chilled than not chilled enough or else it gets really sticky. So you can see my little cracks here push them back together and keep rolling and you want this to be quite thick. We don't want too thin of a sugar cookie here because it's got to hold its own weight. I'm going to show you guys a bit of a trick for getting really nice rounded edges. I'm going to take a little bit of plastic wrap and just lay it over my cookie dough. And this is going to give us kind of like the edge of the donut, although kind of rounded side edge of the donut. I used a bowl because I didn't have a circle cookie cutter this large. I'm going to place it onto my cookie dough and just to show you guys that thickness, it's a pretty thick cookie dough that we've got going on there. And then I'm gonna press down with all of my muscles. Lifting up. Now you can see by using that plastic wrap, what we've got is a really, really nice rounded edge, just like a donut. For my center hole, I'm gonna use the back edge of my cookie cutter, not the sharp edge, because again, I kind of want it to be a little bit more rounded. Right in the middle, and down she goes. The only disadvantage with doing that is you get this really lovely rounded edge, but you do have a little bit that you've got to tidy up around those outside edges. It's worth it for the nice round edge, but you'll just need to neaten it up with a knife. Taking my lined tray now, and I'm just gonna slide my offset spatula just underneath the cookie, making sure he's not stuck to the bench at all. And then carefully lifting. The other advantage to working with super chilled cookie dough is that it's much easier to pick up. It doesn't stretch out of shape. That's gonna go over here onto my piece of parchment. And then I'm gonna take my two popsicle sticks and I'm gonna stick them up into the donut. You can actually cook the popsicle sticks in the oven. So they're gonna go right into the bottom section. This is gonna be what sort of holds it onto the cake. You'll notice that I'm supporting the cookie with my hand as I do this so that I don't stretch it out of shape. One and two. You can kind of just pat it out, but we're going to put decorations on that, so don't worry about it being too perfect. That one's going to go off into a moderate oven, so that's 175 or 350 for about 10 minutes, but keep your eye on it because it's a little thicker than a regular sugar cookie. As soon as you start to see it colouring around the edges, you'll know it's ready and you can pull it out to cool. It smells amazing and it looks perfect. We're just starting to colour around the outside edges, but it's still nice and light in the little centre pieces. So let that sit on the tray for about 10 minutes before you move it onto a cooling rack, just so that it's not just baked fragile. When your little cookie is completely cooled, he'll be Kind of like a bit of a kind of cute cookie lollipop. So now you want to take your dark chocolate or your dark melts, pop them into a snap seal bag, and then I'm just going to snip off the tip. It doesn't have to be too thin because we're covering quite a big area. All right, now I'm going to come down to my cookie and we're going to sort of trace the edge first. So you want to come right out around those edges and you're kind of making like a wavy line. You still want to be able to definitely see 
some of that brown cookie around the outside edge because that's what makes it look like a donut. And then the rest should be covered in delicious dark chocolate. And then for the middle, again, you can just kind of come around the middle and then kind of take it into the center every now and again. And then we're gonna fill it in. So flood, flood, flood. And work quite quickly here because we wanna sort of tap it down so that you've got the option to smooth off all of that dark chocolate before it starts to set. If you guys are having trouble getting your chocolate or your melts to a nice melted consistency where you can pipe it or spread it or if they're too thick, Check out my how to melt chocolate and candy melts. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of shortening. Actually lately I've been adding coconut oil because I prefer the taste, just to kind of thin things out a little bit, especially with those candy melts. They can sometimes be quite chunky when you first melt them and it becomes really difficult to do things like this. Finally, there's a cookie with enough chocolate on it to keep me happy. All right, so at the moment it's all kind of squirrely and a bit messy. I'm gonna take just a little cooling rack and you should be able to lift that by the sticks, just support it underneath. And rather than tapping the cookie, I'm gonna tap the whole rack on the bench. Having the rack also allows some of that chocolate to drip through as it kind of oozes over the side. Beautiful and smooth. Now I've got my slightly larger sprinkles and I'm gonna sprinkle around, but I kind of wanna to stick to the outside edge and the inside edge, only letting a few go into the middle because we're gonna put a bit of writing over there that says the big donut like it does on the movie. And I don't wanna to have to write over too many sprinkles. It'll just make my job a bit harder. And some on that little inside edge. Perfect. We're going to let that one completely cool. I'd advise cooling that at room temperature and just letting it set. And then we're going to come and put some text over the top in our pink candy melts. Once your chocolate's set, take your pink candy melt or your pink chocolate and just pop it into a snap seal bag. You could also use a piping bag with like a number one tip on it here, but I seem to be quite dexterous with a snap seal bag, so that's always my go-to. Snip off a very nice fine point because we're going to be doing some lettering. We need to write on this donut, the big donut. So the top two words are the big and then the bottom word is donut, like on the movie. I'm gonna start with donut and I'm gonna do the letter N first so that I kind of centralize everything. And then I'll do the DO on the other side and the UT. Otherwise you have a habit of kind of shoving everything off to one side too far. So with my lettering, I like to just do the basic letter and then kind of go and fill it in just in case I make a bit of a mistake on one of my first lines. The great thing about the donut on the movie is that it's very obviously hand painted. So we've got a bit of leeway here if your piping is not quite perfect. If you find that your melted candy spreading or kind of going everywhere, not doing as it's told, sit the whole Ziploc bag just on the bench for a few minutes and let it just cool down a little bit. It might just be that your candy's a little bit too well melted and just needs to start to set back up again. So it's a little thicker and easier to pipe with. So again, you'll notice I'm starting with the last letter of my first word and the first letter of my second word just to get my positioning and then I can go out from there. All right, our wording's done. So now let that completely dry. I'm just gonna put it off to the side. You can actually do this a day or two in advance and store it in an airtight container which makes putting together the cake on the day of the party so much quicker. I'm in love with this donut. All right, on to our cake. So like with all my cakes, I like to level it off and I always just use a bread knife or a serrated knife. If you have a cake leveler, you could definitely use that as well. Turning my cake, slicing it nice and flat on top. And now to frost. So I'm going to take my cake, I'm gonna put a little bit of frosting onto my cake board. I'm actually using kind of a thick cork placemat for my board today because it's this really bright green color which goes perfectly with the Zootopia theme. A little bit of frosting down. On goes my first layer of cake and then I'm just gonna frost in between the layers not too much frosting and then my second layer of cake on top I'm gonna put a crumb coat of frosting all over the outside of the cake and then I'm gonna let that set before I put my nice coat on top try not to let any crumbs go back into your frosting bowl so a crumb coat is just a really thin firmly pressed in coat of frosting and that's kind of like your messy coat it just holds everything in place so I can get a really nice coat of perfect blue frosting on top Perfect, so that one's gonna go off into the fridge for about 15, 20 minutes to set. While it's setting, you don't get to rest, we're gonna make our ganache because you want the ganache to kind of get nice and runny and melted and then have a bit of time to set back up so it's not super, super runny. So I'm gonna take my cream and I'm gonna pour it straight over the top of my white chocolate. And then that's gonna go into the microwave at 30 second intervals, stirring in between until it's perfectly smooth. You should have quite a nice runny ganache. It's gonna be quite hot, so you wanna make it now so that it's got time to cool down before we put it on our cake, because we don't want it melting through that buttercream. I'm gonna add a generous amount of my electric orange food coloring, because I want this to be super bright. It's gonna be a great contrast to the blue that I've picked. That is my orange ganache. So that's actually gonna thicken up a little bit more as it sets, but we are going to put that over to the side and get our cake out of the fridge. All right, cake should be 
Firm to touch, no buttercream comes off. Kind of sounds a bit like a drum. So now we're going to put our nice coat of frosting on and you want your sprinkles at the ready here because they're only going to stick to fresh frosting. They're not going to stick to semi-crusted frosting. So we're going to frost all over with a generous amount of frosting. You'll notice this cake's actually not a huge cake. I don't know about you guys, but when I have parties, I have so many desserts that nobody wants a massive serving of cake. And normally Ollie's only got like eight to 10 friends over. So I love that this is a slightly smaller cake that you don't have to serve to 30, 40, 50 people. You can kind of whip it up very easily, but it's still got that wow factor because of the big donut on top, the character included. Once you've got all of your frosting on the cake, wipe off the spatula and come around. This is your opportunity to get the sides neat and straight all the way around in as long of a smooth movement as you can and then I use the edge of my spatula so kind of angled just to come in and kind of take a little bit of that side edge frosting off while also smoothening and neatening my edges all right cakes frosted so now it's time to get some of our sprinkles and I'm just going to pat them around just the bottom kind of inch or so of the cake to add a little bit of color now you can get rid of your excess sprinkles and you should have a nice little rimmed edge. I'm sort of being a bit risky here, but that cake is glued to the bottom of the board, so I think I'm okay. Sprinkles are pretty light. Get rid of any of those excess sprinkles and you should have an iced cake with kind of a sprinkled bottom edge. Back into the fridge, we want that one to completely set. So again, buttercream should be nice and firm and your ganache should still be runny. You certainly don't want it to be completely set, but it's now at least body temperature or room temperature. Not cold, just not at all hot or warm. So on goes a generous amount. And then I'm gonna take my spatula and I'm just gonna spread all the way out to those edges to smooth it out on top and to encourage my drips. I'm just gonna give it a couple of small taps. And I'm gonna let those beautiful drips do their thing. Back off into the fridge to set and that orange color is gonna become more vibrant as that ganache sets. So we're back from the fridge and you want to pick the side that's got the drips that you prefer. Now I've wrapped little Judy's feet in a bit of plastic wrap just so that she doesn't come into contact with the cake and I don't lose any of her in the cake. And what you want to do is you need to size up your donut cookie with the cake. So Judy needs to be holding it kind of in the middle. So she needs to almost look like she's the same size of it, but standing on top of the cake, she's too tall. So I'm going to put her in kind of the side of the cake and then I'm going to frost her in. So I'm going to take my circle cutter and I'm going to cut a bit of a space for her just through those top two layers. And my cake's nice and cool. And then using my sharp knife, I'm just going to come in along the bottom of my little circle cutter because I don't want to upset the drips or anything else and lift out that piece like so. So just testing out that I'm happy with the height she's going to be at with my little cavity cut there. She's going to rest in there just nicely up to her knees. So I'm going to take a little bit of my blue frosting and I'm just going to kind of create like a little frosted section for her to stick to. And then in goes Judy. I'm gonna push her feet right in. So she's actually kind of tucked inside the wall of my cake. And then I'm gonna frost her in. Popping your frosting into a Ziploc bag can help you just kind of position it a little bit more neatly. And I'm gonna frost right in here. So she's well and stuck into position. Now just smooth out the frosting and then if you want, I've got a little bit of my orange ganache left. So I'm just going to just sort of redo those little drips over behind Judy's back. Just so that we've sort of still got the same look going on around the outside of the cake. Now finally you've got to take your big donut and we're going to position it in place. So Judy's hands should really come either side of it and we want it to be relatively central in the cake. You want to take a little blob of those dark candy melts or that dark chocolate and use it just to stick Judy's hand to the back of that donut. Essentially, it's gonna glue her hand in place and it's gonna help secure her to the cake a little bit better. Just before disaster strikes, Judy saves the day, catches the gigantic donut cookie and hopefully shares it with me. This is a really well-sized, easy to achieve Zootopia cake and any Zootopia fan is gonna go absolutely nuts for this. If you're having a whole Zootopia theme party, make sure you check out my Zootopia cookies. And guys, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do for two new videos every week. Thanks very much for watching.